Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today I want to go over five heroes you shouldn't pick in Dota. These are five heroes, well it's the opposite of what I usually do which is like telling you what to pick. I want to tell you what heroes you should be afraid of picking and having on your team now. Bit of a disclaimer, I do not recommend griefing the game just because one of your teammates picks one of these five heroes. I know people have a tendency to basically complain and ruin the game and feel like they're going to lose just because their teammate picks a bad hero. Lycan, who's the first hero on this list, has a 40% win rate. That means you have a 40%, let's say, chance to win if you have a Lycan on your team. That's not literally how it works, obviously, but you get the point. That's not even that low. So do I recommend picking these heroes? No, but just don't grief if you happen to have one. All right, let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like, literally, with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below, I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. First of all, we have Lycan. Now, if you don't know what happened in the recent patches, quite a few things were changed about Lycan that you might not even really fully understand. I didn't even fully understand them until talking to a friend of mine recently. Uh, and so here's basically the explanation. Units were changed. So basically every major summon was changed. The damage type was changed. Essentially, summons do more damage to heroes now but less damage to creeps. That is why when 7.31 originally came out, Undying was one of the highest win rate heroes of the patch. Essentially what happened was, his zombies were almost only used on heroes, okay? Only high MMR players were using uh, Tombstone on creeps. Everyone else only used Tombstone on, on, and, and the shard on heroes, okay? As a result, the win rate was largely dictated by this, the Dota buff win rate. Then, the Dota buff win rate shot up after this change. Why? Because the, the zombies didn't do very- they don't do very much damage to creeps now. They do almost nothing now. It's like- it was like a 50% nerf after the undying zombie damage nerf and this change. However, they decimate heroes. So on the topic of Lycan, not only did Lycan's, you know, creeps get this change where they do less damage to creeps and Lycan likes to farm a lot and split push a lot, so he does less, less damage to creeps and towers, so his split pushing ability and ability to farm is significantly worse. They also then nerfed the wolf damage heavily. So the wolves, not only do they do less damage to creeps, they were technically, when the patch came out, supposed to do more damage to heroes. That's not even the case. They do less now as well. So essentially everything about Lycan is worse. <laughs> yes, there's a lot of creeps to take over, but the zero was easily like, one of the most nerfed heroes of the recent patches. The hero's win rate has dropped 6%. We're back to the shit days of Lycan, boys. <laughs> this hero is currently sitting at the lowest win rate in Dota. 40%. At least Nature's Prophet's higher. My man. Let's go, Nature's Prophet. I'm not putting him on this list because everyone should play Prophet, but he's, he's pretty low win rate too. All right, getting into the second hero is Tinker. Out of all the mids you could pick, this might be the worst. <sighs> to keep it simple, I mean... Outside of like Brood, who who was a hero that was heavily hurt by the uh, you know the damage type change on on summons, Tinker, man, this hero, whew, it might have been the hardest like direct nerf hero. It received so many freaking changes that just decimated its numbers. The Keen Convoyance time was nerfed. I think Laser was nerfed. I think Missiles were nerfed. The biggest one was easily the Keen Convoyance change, uh, just making it worse at every level. I think Rearm, oh yeah, Rearm is worse as well. Like this hero just got destroyed it got annihilated like <laughs> it was kind of impressive how much they nerfed it i'm like you know tinker is pretty annoying it might have been the most frustrating hero to play against outside of like I, I would even say it was worse than techies in a good tinker game easily actually but then they sent tinker straight to the shadow realm so out of all the mids you could pick that are like greedy don't make it tinker instead of picking tinker heroes that you could pick actually this is good let me quickly go back to lycan heroes you can pick instead of lycan i think beastmaster is better profit if you really want to get into a unit hero but i think beastmaster is the best unit hero of choice in this patch even though his win rate also fell by four percent recently now getting into tinker heroes that i would recommend picking instead i think kunkka is a much better option i think storm is a significantly much better option i think razor is a better option 
If you're gonna go for like a heavy, heavy greedy mid, uh, I think TA is is just much, much better. Now, do any of these heroes fit the play style that Tinker does? No, they don't. Tinker is a very unique hero, but all I'm saying is give some other heroes a shot if you're one of the scummy Tinker pickers that happen to exist in Dota. All right, coming in at number three, we have Pudge. <laughs> I know people love to hate on Pudge, so like, this isn't really too bad. I feel bad for Pudge pickers. The hero was recently buffed, but funny enough, his win rate doesn't really reflect it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what Valve was thinking with these flesh sheep changes, man. I don't know. This hero is so comically, like, it, the way Pudge gets changed is always so funny because it's like, the hero is just never good. There was one patch I remember where, like, Crit was playing it consistently and, like, teams were picking it for, like, some very short period of time and then they destroyed the hook cooldown again. It was like when hook was a really low cooldown for a period of time at level 1. It was, like, really, really low. I don't remember the patch, but... <laughs> Ever since then, Pudge has just been, I don't know, on and off, man. I don't think this hero... It's just like... Now it has no magic resist. So, it just gets annihilated by Rot until you have a hood. If you go hood. Which, like, by the way, most Pudges don't want to go. Because they want to go Aether Lens Shard, Four Staff Blink, this type of route. <laughs> and so it's just like... Uh, man, it's brutal, dude. I don't even know what to say about Pudge. It's just like... The only time I think this hero is okay is with like Vipers and Pugnas in lane. Honestly, if you hit like a hook and you're laning with a Viper or Pugna, the hero generally dies because they're gonna be low already because Pugna and Viper are constantly shipping them down. And then on top of that, you know, the hook does a very significant amount of damage. Uh, 150 pure. Like, don't get me wrong, hook, hook is a great ability. The problem is most players don't understand how to use it. Like, largely, you can use it on the range creep in bad lanes. So if you have a Pudge on your team, or you are a Pudge picker, and you for some reason pick this hero, then if you're landing with something like a Sand King who sucks at level 1 or a Slardar, just hook the range creep, guys. It's your best bet to put the creep equilibrium in your favor and enable your, your lane to exist even with a Pudge in it. So <laughs> that's just a bit of a tip, a bit of a side tangent, but just pick like any other position for, except for like Earth Spirit, because that hero is hard, but like you can pick Clockwork, you know, uh, you could pick Nyx Assassin, you could pick, um, if you want to get really crazy, you could pick, like, Enchantress, who I think is very strong right now, and, uh, go from there. It's actually crazy to me that even Grimstroke, a hero that notoriously has a low win rate, is actually a very high win rate right now, at 50%, so that's pretty cool to me. Coming in at number four, I hate to put my boy on the list, but honestly, I think he's in the worst state he's been in, like, a long time, and that is Batrider. They did recently give this hero, like, a movement speed buff, but it's just not... It's not enough. They nerfed the shard, like, really hard. Essentially, what you would do on Battle Rider is you'd buy a shard, you'd buy some attack speed, and you'd kill them with Sticky Napalm, but... Ever since they got rid of the, the shard being the two, um, the two Flame Break charges, which, personally, I really liked. Like, I, I really, really liked. I actually think it would be a little bit too busted if they added that back in. With the shard being at minute 15, I think, uh, the build would quickly become Aetherland Shard, and you would go down that route. Or, I could even see people just going, like, a skirmish build. Like, going, like, phase, something stupid, like, phase, instead of even going bots, you could go, like, phase shard, and just play around this 15-minute shard, because it really was insane, so, I, essentially, this hero doesn't have any clear spike. The only way Batrider is viable now is if you have a favorable lane. I think if you don't have a favorable lane on this hero, it's generally bad. And that's kind of always, no, I was gonna say that's always been the case, but that's not true. Even in the past, like, like, couple patches, when he had these flame break talents, I mean, uh, Flame Break Shard, now they're Talons, but when it was a Shard, the hero could farm and, like, be a scaling late-game hero. Now it doesn't have any clear way to scale until it's level 25 talent, which allows Flame Break to apply two Sticky Napalm charges, which is an insane talent, because you also, at level 20, have the talent that gives you two Flame Break charges. The problem is, you need level 25 until this is viable. And the other level 25 talent, instead of Flame Break Charges, is Sticky Napalm Damage, which is a very great talent. So it's like, okay, do I take the Flame Break Charges at 20, which aren't even good, like very good, until I have the level 25 talent. So it's like, I need five more mega levels before this is even the right choice. <laughs> even then it might not even be the right choice, which is kind of sad. <laughs> and so, yeah, I don't think Batrider is very good. Also, this hero is incredibly difficult, so most people just frankly... Do not use Sticky Napalm correctly. I've never watched a 3k MMR Batrider that uses Sticky Napalm even remotely correctly. And yeah, it's just like not the hero right now. And finally, last but not least, 
Let's talk a little bit about mids. Honestly, most safe laners are, like, pretty decent right now. I, I will say, like, as an honorable mention, if you're thinking about, like, safe laners that maybe shouldn't pick, uh, Sven is kind of just, like, the worst farming safe laner right now. I don't see this hero winning games. I think if you're gonna pick Sven, you should just pick, like, Dusa or, like, Luna and just farm with those heroes instead. You're gonna do a lot more in most games. Uh, on top of that, I think TB... Like, I don't think this hero is that bad. It has its place in Dota. It's like a decent laner and its Scotty timing is very powerful, especially against certain heroes like um, like Luna, for instance, and even Medusa in some games. Its Scotty timing is fantastic, but it requires you to understand like how to split push with illusions and use illusions. And meta is a very, very dangerous ability. The, the cool, I mean, the duration of meta is lower than it's ever been. And as a result, it's very easy to waste meta right now and so i see a lot of people just ruining games on this hero as a result they'll go high ground they'll pop meta it ends after like 38 seconds i think is the time right now and then it's like okay whoops i guess i can't do anything for the next two minutes and then your team feeds and it's pretty bad but all right for the last hero it's lena i also wanted to mention quap i think like these heroes funny enough you're gonna see pros picking these heroes guys like, what I mean by that is you're going to see pros picking Lina and, and Quap. I don't think you'll see pros picking any Lycan, any Tinker, any Pudge, or any Batrider, frankly. Maybe Batrider. Maybe. Like, maybe. <laughs> but I I do think you'll see Lina and Quap. I just wanted to basically put these heroes on the list and kind of on the same vein as Tinker say, if you're going to farm, you got to be careful about Quap or, or, or Lina. Lina's not even in a bad spot. I think the issue with the hero is its fundamental difficulty. This hero is very hard to play. The W is difficult to use, and the E is more difficult than ever to use. You might not know what Lina's E, her Fury Soul, currently does. How it's set up is you get stacks based on how many creeps or heroes your Q and W hit. As a result, in a team fight, if you're isolated and, and you're killing one hero, there's a good chance you're not going to have very many stacks. On top of that, if all the creep camps nearby are farmed and you have no stacks going into the team fight, you're likely going to play the team fight with one or two stacks of Fiery Soul. As a result, how it's currently set up, you can get up to seven max stacks. It used to be three, now it's seven. So if you only have two, you don't do any damage. You have like zero movement speed and no attack speed. So this hero is very easy to just completely grief on now, where in the past, if a team fight broke out, you cast QW ulti, you have your max stacks. Now, you better make sure you've nuked a wave or kept your stacks going into the fight, which is a little bit clunky now. And, and if, you, if you're not careful and aware of all of these things, which is very hard, you will just lose a fight because of it. So that's kind of the tough thing for me. And then Quap, I think like it's so easy to grief with Blink. Honestly, it's like the main thing I've seen. This hero doesn't farm inherently very well. And then it's easy to grief with Blink. Um, <laughs> and they hard nerfed her E mana. I think they made it 35 more mana, which was like rough dude, or 30 more mana, which was rough for the early game. So all in all, I think uh, there's just better heroes. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If there's heroes that you think you should not pick or you've been seeing just come constantly lose on your team, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm curious to see what you guys have to say uh, about these heroes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below and I'm out. Peace.